What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're going to learn all about using custom cells in your table views. We'll put together the app that you see here. We've got our custom cell with these beautiful sunset images and the labels to the right hand side. We'll talk about reusing template cells and how to hook all of this up for your project. If that sounds good, drop a like down below. Hit subscribe while you're at it if you're into iOS and let's get into using custom cells in our table views. All right, let's go ahead and get started by opening up Xcode and creating a new project. We're going to stick with the app template under the iOS tab. And let's go ahead and give this project a name of custom table view, just like that. You want to make sure your language is set to Swift, Lifecycle UI kit, and interface is Storyboard. Go ahead and continue, save the project wherever you'd like. I'll toss it onto my desktop. And first things first, before we actually get into writing some of our code, we're going to bring in a number of images that we're going to show in our table view. Now I've literally gone to Google images uh, and searched up a sunset and just dragged these to my desktop. So you can go ahead and use those images or you can go and find your own. So we're going to take this whole folder and drag it into our .xe assets file and it's going to bring them all in just like that. And let's go ahead and expand our window now, our Xcode window, and jump into our view controller. So essentially, how we want to set up our table view with custom cells is twofold. First, we want to create a table view, and then we want to customize a cell. So the simplest way you can create a table view is in your storyboard file, where we can basically just drag on a table view onto our view. So let's wait a second for this guy to load up. There it is. So what we want to go ahead and do and hit the plus button at the top right here, and you're going to get this uh, floating window pop up with all of the user interface elements that we can bring onto our view out of the box. So we want to go ahead and search for a table view. It gives you a nice blurb on the right here about what it is. I'm not going to bore you guys and read it. Go ahead and drag that onto your iPhone view here. And the next thing we want to do is we want to apply some constraints to it. Constraints essentially define how the view is laid out. In other words, how far is it down from the top, from the left, from the right, from the bottom, etc., etc. So now that our table view is selected, at the very bottom right corner of our screen, let's go ahead and hit this third icon, which kind of looks like a square with these three uh, little pins coming out of it. And we're essentially going to do what I just described. We're going to say this is zero from the top, zero from the left, zero from the right, and you guessed it, zero from the bottom. And once we've got all four of these situated, let me go ahead and uncheck this height, which I accidentally checked. We can go ahead and click add for constraints. And once you go ahead and click that, you'll notice that the table view that we just dragged on has expanded to take up the entire width and height of the screen. Now we're not quite done yet. So now that we have a table here, we need a way to reference it from our code. So this is where IB outlets come in. So we want to come into our code here. And we're going to say at IB outlets. And if your autocomplete isn't working, just type it out like that. And this is going to be a weak var. We're going to go ahead and call it table. And it's going to be of type UI table and then a exclamation for a force unwrap. The IB in this IB outlet stands for interface builder, essentially where we just drag and dropped that table view. And now what we're going to do is we're going to come back to this and we can right click this icon right here, this first one. And we're going to drag from the table to this particular table view. And you'll see that it highlights as I drag over it. And essentially what we've done is we have connected the code for the outlet to our visual user interface element here. So that's all good and done. Now that we've got the table set up, we want to start adding rows into it. And this is a concept known as prototype cells. So we're going to go ahead and select the table. We'll go ahead and open this right panel, which is called the attributes inspector. And the second option in here is prototype cells and by default it's zero. We're going to go ahead and hit this up arrow and it's going to increment that to one. And what you'll see here is we get a cell that pops up. The concept of this cell is the fact that you define a template of sorts and you fill in the content via your code. So if you think of an app like Facebook, every single of the post uh, cells in your you know, table view is similar in some regards, right? There's a profile photo, there's a name label. The idea is it's a template and you use it over and over. So in our case, we're gonna want an image in here and we are also gonna want a label. So how do we bring those elements in? Well, it's just how we brought in the table. So we're gonna go ahead and hit the plus 
we're going to search for a image view and I'm going to drag and drop it into our cell. Make sure you drop it into that cell. And the first thing we'll do with the image is add some constraints just like we did for the table. We're going to say this is 10 from the top. Maybe we'll go ahead and say 10 from the left. We're going to say 10 from the bottom. And instead of defining a right, we're going to go ahead and give it a fixed width of maybe 150. Go ahead and click add for constraints and there is our image. Now on the right hand side of it, we're going to want a label. So you guessed it, we're going to search up a label. I'll go ahead and drag that guy in. And once again, you guys know the drill at this point. Let's go ahead and add some constraints, 10 from the top. We're going to say maybe 10 from the left. Now if you hit this little drop down, something you'll notice interesting in here is we're saying this is going to be 10 from the left of the image, right? Which logically and relatively is on the left side of the label. And also now we're going to say 10 from the right and finally 10 from the bottom of the container. Go ahead and hit add for constraints and you've got this prototype. Now one thing we're going to tweak on here, and maybe we'll do it in a second actually, uh, the next thing we want to actually do is supply some data into this table view cell. Now how do you do that? Well, we need to specify a class that we can link up to this table view cell, which is going to uh, have references to our image that we dragged in and the label. So if we go ahead and open that right panel again, what we want to go ahead and fill out is two stuff, two, two things, two stuff. I'm getting ahead of myself. Uh, we want to go ahead and say identifier here is cell. You can go ahead and pick any identifier and we're going to stick with cell since it's fairly straightforward. The next thing we want to do is specify a class which represents this type of cell. Now to do that we need to create a class. We're going to right click this. We're going to hit new file. We're going to stick with a Cocoa Touch class and we want to subclass a table view cell. And I'm going to go ahead and call it custom table view cell. You don't need to check this box for a XIB file. Go ahead and hit enter twice to create and uh, open it up. And the first that we're going to do, everyone's favorite piece, we're going to delete all the code in here. And the reason we're going to do that is because all we want in here are, again, IB outlets, which are going to reference the two user interface elements that we had dragged in. So we're going to say weak var. We're going to go ahead and say icon image view, and it's going to be of type UI image view with a exclamation mark. And we can go ahead and copy and paste it. And the other thing we dragged in was a label, and it's of type UI label. Once again, force unwrap exclamation mark. So now that we've actually got this here, what we need to do in our main.storyboard is we need to tell the interface builder that this cell is of type that custom cell class we created. So you can either paste it in or type it in yourself, but if you hit the drop down, Xcode is smart enough to figure out that this is the only table view cell that we've got. Now that we've brought that in, the last thing, and I promise this is the last thing we're going to do here in the storyboard, is we're going to right click on the cell in this left uh, panel and we're going to connect those outlets. So you guessed it, the label goes to the UI label and then the other thing we have created is the icon image view that goes to our image view. And now the last thing left to do in our code is actually pile in our data and get it rendering. So let's jump back to our view controller and let me actually go ahead and run this in a simulator so you guys see what our starting state is. We're going to pick a simulator. I'll pick the 12 Pro Max. Go ahead and hit that play button to compile the application and you should see a empty white application pop up in your simulator, hopefully. Bear with my simulator here. It tends to be a little slow sometimes. What you'll notice is you're not going to see any, any data. What we're going to actually do is we're going to bring in those sunset images on the left and it's going to also have you know some labels on the right of it. So if we go back to our XC assets here, we can see that we have brought in uh, five sunset images and they're numbered one all the way to five, real creative. So we're going to go back into our view controller here and what I'm going to go ahead and do in here is create an array and this array is going to have you know, the information we need to actually populate this table view. So let's create an object for that. Let's go ahead and create an object called Sunset. It's going to have a title and we're going to try to spell things correctly. And the other thing it's going to have is a image name, which is also going to be a string. And this data is going to be an array 
of these sunset objects. So let's go ahead and create these. So the title, I'm gonna leave it empty for a quick second so we can do the images first. We're just gonna copy and paste it a total of five times. We're gonna increment all of these numbers since they are all different images. I will go ahead and change the title here. So maybe we'll go ahead and say morning run. This one will be evening uh, sunsets vacation photos maybe this one will be uh, visiting friends and some other title because I'm out of ideas so now that we've got this data here we need to actually plumb it into our table view so we need to go ahead and say table view or table is what we called it and we're gonna assign its data source to self so this is basically saying that this class, aka self, is responsible for supplying the data and the way that we uh, continue to implement that is by saying that this class conforms to the UI table view data source protocol. Now you're going to see an error up here. If you go ahead and click it, it's going to say that you need to require uh, add required functions, which we're going to add right down here. So what we're going to go ahead and do is say number of a rows in this table will be data.count since it's an array. And the most important one is going to be cell for row at index path. And this is where we're actually going to get that cell for each of the rows. So we're going to say table view, dq a reusable cell. The identifier is going to be cell. Keep in mind we set this in the storyboard for index path. And we're going to say this is one of our custom table view cells, just like that. We're going to return the cell here in the middle here. You guessed it. We're going to go ahead and now be able to assign to our label as well as our uh, icon image view. So we had defined these in the other class. We're going to say that this equals something. Now we're going to do an empty string in nil. And the reason we're going to do that is temporarily we're going to go ahead and figure out which sunset object we want to use for this cell. So we're going to say get the nth element in our data array. So essentially, this function is called every single time that the table wants to figure out, you know, what cell to show at a particular position in the vertical uh, list. So we're going to go ahead and get the sunsets. And now we can say the labels uh, text is going to be sunset.title. And here we're going to go ahead and say this is a UI image named sunset dot image name. Boom. And that's basically it. Let's go ahead and give it a run and let's make sure that our table view is actually showing up and then we'll maybe polish it up a little bit and wrap it up. So cool. So we definitely see our uh, image view here. So one thing that looks a little weird with the image, the label is a little small too actually, is the fact that our sizing is a little wonky. And the reason for that is we can adjust the way that all of this ends up rendering here in the storyboard. So I'm going to select the image view and open up the attributes inspector. We're going to hit this tab and you're going to see a bunch of options here. The one that I'm interested in here is the content mode. We're going to say aspect fill. That basically means we're going to maintain the aspect ratio and fill the entirety of, you know, the image views container. The other thing I'm going to do here is we're going to bump up the font size of this label just so it fills it up a little more nicely. So I went ahead and made it 28. Go ahead and give it a run. You can hit command R on your keyboard and that'll build it again and run it in your simulator. And now you'll see that a our text is larger, but now the image looks a little weirder, right? So it fills up the entirety of the height of the uh, actual image frame, but it's too tall. And you might be wondering, well, why is it too tall? It's too tall because the frame of the image is being computed by the size of the actual image that we had dragged into the project. But instead of doing this, because it kind of looks ugly, we want to have a fixed height for each of those cells. So another function we can implement is height for row uh, at index path. And the way that we actually need to implement it or what we need to do to implement it is up here is a UI table view delegate. And we want to say, just how we said the data source itself, we're going to say the delegate itself as well. And now we can go ahead and say height for row at index path. And I'm going to go ahead and return maybe 140. This is just honestly a random number that I'm making up. Let's see if it looks good. I think it will. And now it looks way more appropriate. And there you have it. You've just created a custom cell with this image and your title in Swift and the storyboard. So a quick recap before we wrap it up. Essentially, there are three things that we did. Uh, two overall, which is configure the storyboard and configure your code, but let's break it up into three. 
The first thing is create a table and add this table onto your view in the storyboard. The next thing that we need to do is set up a prototype cell here, which we did with this image view and the label. And we also created a associated custom subclass. Notice this is a UI table view cell. We've got two outlets in here and we've also connected them in our storyboard to the respective image view and UI label. The last thing that we ended up doing in the view controller is actually hooking up the data source and delegates via assigning it to self and conforming to the protocols up here. And we took our data, we put it in an array and we provided it here to our table. And boom, that's how you end up getting this awesome looking table. And in fact, this is actually the fundamentals to how a lot of really, really large scale apps are made. Think things like Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, etc. So that's all I've got for you guys today. If you enjoyed the video, drop a like down below, subscribe to the channel if you're into iOS, Swift, making apps, the whole nine yards. Comment if you have any questions. Always love helping you guys out. I'll do my best to answer any questions. Thanks again for watching. I'll catch you on the next one.